are a lifelong learner. Every move yeah. you've described to me in your mm. career, it was because you wanted to know more. You wanted a change. You understood where you were and you wanted to expand. So mm. can you speak to that about how important it is to keep an open mind and to say yes to different opportunities? I think it's very important for an individual to be willing to get out of their comfort zone. Because one of the things I realized is when you've been in a place for a long time, you become very comfortable because you know exactly what to do when and where. And yet when you go elsewhere, you're likely to sometimes face, uh, you may actually even you know, experience a cultural shock. But I think it's worth it to go elsewhere and learn. Because I can say that what I learn in the Seychelles actually later on comes back to Uganda. There are certain things I do and I realize, oh, this is from Seychelles and I'm gonna do it this way. I've appreciated it. So I, I think also not remaining on a single journey is, is enriching. Uh, so, so it's extremely important that we open up ourselves to challenges. You know, the fear is inevitable to say, hmm, am I, you know, to, to, to really ask whether what you are doing is the right thing and so on, won't I burn my fingers and so on and so forth. But I think you learn, there will always be something you learn, something you pick up and bring back, uh, which uh, enables you to do better. And, and these lessons you've shared with us, like that lesson is so important. As mm -hmm. I wind up our conversation though, you mentioned Paul. I think that's what you said your husband's name was. And yes. that balance, because your career has just been extraordinary. So can mm -hmm. you share with us uh, about your family life, the role Paul had and how you were able to do that and raise a family? Oh. Uh, Paul is a very, very hands-on person. When I look at him, I, all I can say is he's, he's uh, different from many men. Is For example, when I went, I went for my PhD when we already had a baby. And I remember discussing, I was so sure that I would have to go with my baby to Copenhagen for my doctoral studies. And I even told him uh, the program which I was um, you know, going under, we are very supportive. They had said, you can bring your baby and so on and so forth. But Paul had also studied in uh, Europe for his actually first degree and master's degree. He didn't say no to me. And I kept on, you know, uh, saying, okay, when the baby, you know, when I go with the baby, because our son then was only eight months old. But one, I do remember one day he wakes up in the, in the night and says, Lillian, you are not taking Emmanuel. I couldn't believe it. And I said, what? He says, you know, if you take him, our child will suffer. And there is, there's even a possibility you won't uh, complete your PhD. And he told me because he was in Europe that, you know, I went to school with young ladies who had children but my heart went out to them because you must run from school, go and pick up the child if you are late and so on and so forth. So he, he really has never thought that, for example, bringing up children or doing house chores is a woman's place only. So I think for me, yes, that was the beginning when I realized, phew, this person is actually serious. He's, he's different. And he said, Emmanuel will stay with me. And I even remember saying, okay, will I, can I take Emmanuel to my mother? And he said, why would anybody look after my child when I'm alive? I'm going to be with him. And one of the things, maybe it will be the last story I'll tell you. When my children cried, when young, they would say, daddy, daddy, instead of mom. And, uh, and, I, <laughs> and I remember one day going to pick up my son, one of the, the youngest actually, and yet for him, 
Uh, I mean, I had him after my PhD, even the second one, I had him after my PhD. So one day I went to the daycare center. He must have been at around three years of age or nursery. And I went to pick him up. And then one day the teacher calls me and says, you know, when uh, Elisha's dad picks him up, he runs to him. For you, he walks to you. <laughs> well, I've never been able to understand what it means because I asked Elisha in adulthood, why did you used to do that? He just laughed it off. But um, even, <laughs> even the, and I remember the second, um, um, uh, our second uh, boy called Joshua. He's the one I recall so carefully, clearly. When he cried as a child, he would cry, daddy, daddy, you know? So, you know, Paul, Paul is a gem. Paul is a gem. He's supported me through this journey. So he is your rock. Yes, so he is. We have to say to every woman out there, whoever your significant other is, you need their support. It's we so need. important to have that yeah. backup, to have that support uh, mm -hmm. when you're pursuing your career. Because it is just so hard to balance. It's very, 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 very. And yes. your career. So my mm -hmm. final question then is, how do you want to be remembered? What do you want your legacy to be when they think of Lily or Lillian or the justice? Um, what what is your oh, legacy what do you want to oh, be remembered for i want to be remembered as a woman of courage i want to be remembered as a very principled woman who sometimes took decisions that perhaps led to her not getting to the next level and so I want people to know that at times, as long as what you, you are doing is the right thing, be willing to stand away from the crowd and it, it may lead you to lose something, but it's worth it. You will sleep well, you will sleep well. So that's what I want to be remembered for. Well, you will certainly be remembered for that and for so many of the ways you have contributed to women and women's rights and human rights and to the academia and to the courts and the international assignment. And it truly has been a great honor and privilege to have this dialogue with you. And so thank you, thank you so much for all your honesty mm -hmm. and candor and sharing your life lessons with all of us. We're so appreciative. Thank you so much. And thank you very much, Anne. Perhaps you also made me think about things I had never thought about, and it's been a privilege to interact with you. Thank you.